Okay guys, today I have something really special to show you. This is the new 47 inch spade from right wing. Uh, this is sort of the little brother of the spade 66 that I've been flying for a while. And I was in a really lucky position to get the hold of two of these kits. Um, some of the first ones that came off the production line. And um, I had the chance to assemble two of them. So here they are. There you can see um, the classic spade design with the elongated fuselage. Um, in the center you have um, the two wing saddles behind that and then the plug-in wings around there. So I made two versions of this. Um, this orange and yellow one here um, is fitted with a Ruby autopilot you know, and no surprises there. Uh, the Ruby flies it extremely well as you would expect. Um, the Ruby probably one of the, the easiest to use, safest autopilots out there. So um, for even a beginner pilot um, it makes the plane extremely easy to hand launch and to fly around safely. And in this one I wanted to do something a little different um, because this plane um, is going to be used extensively for aerial photography. I wanted to have an autopilot over which I have full control. Um, and you know there are many opinions about what autopilot is best but um, you know, personally I, I do like the Pixhawk a lot. Um, I, I like the PID controllers, it, it gives you a lot of freedom to set up things exactly the way you like. Um, of course the complexity is a lot higher compared to the Ruby, um, so you know, for a beginner it's, it's a bit more difficult, it's, um, it has a, strong, a steeper learning curve, but um, you know, once you learn how to use it, it's not that bad. So um, this one here is flown with a uh, big sword autopilot, so there in the front you can see how I installed the pitot tube. Um, so this was basically just put through a piece of coroplast stuck to the side of the airplane. Um, and the advantage of that is if you happen to, to bump the front, it will just slip back. So um, it's not going to be damaged that easily. Okay, so let's take a look at how I set up uh, this Spade 47. As I showed you before, um, there is the pitot tube um, in its coroplast in the front. Um, and one of the nice features of this plane is that there is a groove inside there in which you can lay you know, wires or tubing or, or whatnot. In this case, I, I use that for the tubing for the airspeed sensor. And then right there, is the airspeed sensor itself. Um, here I have the, the power module, the Pixel power module. And then on this side of course we have the, the Pixel itself sitting in its bay um, with a free sky receiver. And there you can see how I set that up. Now let me just move around here and I'll show you. So I don't know if you'll be able to see that really but Right, right there, in front, <clears throat> um, right beneath the plastic, that's where I put the LED. And um, that LED then actually shines through the plastic, so you can even see it, um, the color of the LED, when the lid is fully closed. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here, uh, let me see if I can do a, a one-handed plug in here. Maybe, maybe not. Let's see. This is making life really difficult. There you go. Alright, so now we have power. So there you can see the light very clearly visible. Even in the sunlight you can see that quite clearly through the, the white coroplast plastic. And next to it of course you have the arming switch um, of the Pixhawk. Now let's move on to the main payload bay. So here I have the in the back 
I have the 3 Robotics um, data radio, 915 MHz, sitting there, and the antenna poking through a hole in the lid there. And then in the front, I have my camera holder. So this camera holder here um, is basically made of EPP that's just rubberized with, um, with some liquid tape. So there you have it. And it it just is a it's it has a nice firm um, friction fit in there. So you just pop the camera right on top of that, you know, attach with some Velcro. Um, something I did on this plane was to make the camera hole um, rectangular instead of round. So you know I, I thought, well, you know, we take pictures and they're rectangular, not round. So why do we make big round holes in the plane when you can actually get away with having a smaller hole that's rectangular? and in fact it, it works very well so um, from now on you will be seeing rectangular holes, camera holes in my planes okay and then let me just show you how I actually put in the or use the camera here um, with this this camera holder again made of EPP foam and then just rubberized with uh, liquid tape um, I, you can place the camera on it, the camera itself has some velcro around the lens housing so um, that fits into velcro that's on the camera holder and now you have the camera attached there you know that the velcro holds it nice and firmly and when you have it like this you can set up your camera so you can make sure all your, all your settings are where they should be um, you can then essentially switch the camera on and there you go now it's ready to pop into the aircraft and it just fits in with a friction fit and for power on this plane um, the motor there is uh, an Exceed RC rocket series um, you can buy these motors from hobby parts and um, the motor model there if you can read it it's um, 3015 um, 1300 kV and I'm running it using a an APC 9x4.7 prop, and this this run you know, it it really um, gives the the plane you know, adequate speed and um, a, a lot of you know take uh, you know get up and go. So on the launch it it has a lot of power as well. Um, at full throttle, static on the bench, um, it draws about 61 amps with a 4S battery. Okay, let's see how it flies. Um, the CG on this plane should be about 8 inches from where the leading edge of the wing attaches to the fuselage. It's always a good idea to check that the autopilot is moving the control surfaces in the correct directions. I'm using a launcher, a bungee launcher made by Ag Eagle. Um, it's a very convenient design. Um, it's uh, you know suitable for a, a wide variety of different wing air type airplanes. Um, you just make the the hook holes at the bottom of of the wing, so you can adapt it to many different kinds of wings. Um, it holds the wing firmly, so you can actually open the throttle while it's on the launcher and then launch. In this case, I I'm launching closed throttle and then opening it up. Okay, so at uh, 14 meters per second, the amp draw is quite a bit better than at 16. So in general, unless it's fighting wind, at that airspeed, Heading to waypoint it seems four. to be drawing around about 5 amps. Altitude hold is rock solid within about 2 meters. 
mostly sitting at 100 where it's set and dropping about one to two meters in the turn. Heading to waypoint two. So I now have my L1 parameter set at about at 17, and it is just rock solid on the line. So very little evidence of weaving taking place. So that seems to be an appropriate L1 parameter value, and the speed is now set at 15 meters per second. It's just flying very well. I have no complaints. Not at all. For a maiden flight, doing this kind of thing, you know, uh, an auto mission on the maiden flight with almost no parameter changes needed from a first guess, and this plane is just amazing. Gotta love it. Okay, let's check the stall. A little bit of altitude, power off, feeding in elevator. Uh, it's full up elevator. Just mushes. Very, very good. Hey, hey! That's it, another great airplane from Right Wing. Thanks for watching.